Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. There is a second ship in the Blitz Pass, I believe, and uh, I just had a brief look how long ago it was that I have reviewed HMS Exeter. And that was in 2019. <laughs> Dang, I've been around for a while, have I? Uh, anyway, fi I figured that it's this long ago, that was before the British heavy cruiser tech tree line even existed. So it's probably time to take another look. And as luck will have it, I actually have the Exeter in my personal account. I haven't really played the ship an awful lot, but uh, it's there. <laughs> so I figured I might as well take a quick uh, recap and, and see what's different about Exeter. And I had the Union Jack, you can see it here. I've got, I had the Union Jack camo laying around, which while being completely ahistorical, uh, makes it look sufficiently British that I figured. Um, yeah, it's a good good opportunity to uh, to take yet another look at this ship. So, what is what is new? Or what's what's different about the Exeter? Well, the Exeter is a heavy cruiser. Actually, let me get back here. The Exeter is a heavy cruiser, and she's at tier five, and she has turrets, which is uh, not something you see an awful lot around this tier. So, a lot of this are still kind of the single gun mount thingies. But she's got dual turrets. So if we are comparing her to, let's say, the Hawkins, which is the Tech Tree line heavy cruiser that um, nobody's going to be accusing of being very good. But it's tier 5, so things are a bit special. Um, the first thing that stands out is that the Exeter gets two smoke screens. And she also gets precise aiming. Whereas the Hawkins has the defensive AA, and the Hawkins gets an extra heal, which the Exeter does not. In terms of hulls, um, it's a so the term heavy cruiser uh, it designates the caliber of the gun, not the armor plating of the ship, uh, of which the Exeter does not have any. So this thing is a very squishy cruiser. Anything that has large guns, um, even things with small guns, can severely hurt this ship. And she's got even less hit points than the Hawkins, and uh, no no uh, no extra heal. She is okayishly fast, but the maneuverability is a little bit on the lacking side. Uh, she doesn't like to turn particularly well. And yeah, the guns. So uh, the guns are not as bad as on the Hawkins. And I think that's all we can really say about them. They look decent on paper. You have a 10 kilometer range. You've got a 7% fire chance. You've got almost 800 points of damage on the AP, and this is tier five. But um, the AP is all right, but it's not great. So it's good enough to overpin destroyers at close ranges, which means you do need to understand heavy cruiser gameplay at tier five, which means you can't just use AP every time. Uh, she does struggle to penetrate battleship weak spots um, at any kind of range, unless it's close range, also due to the dispersion, which is horrifically bad. Uh, and uh, the HE is not quite as good as on the Hawkins, but it's it's in the same ballpark. The bigger issue is that he's got a 10.5 second base reload on this thing, which is dreadful. <laughs> so you only get to fire these guns um, every once in a while. Uh, she does have torpedoes, which are worse than on the Hawkins. Uh, they're worse in terms of reload. Everything else is pretty much the same. But in return, you get two extra ones. So I guess all in all, it just basically balances itself out. Uh, the AA is better. Uh, yeah, the, the Hawkins has the defensive AA, which is hilarious because 75% extra of nothing is still nothing. Uh, this thing has some AA in tier 5, but it's tier 5. You're not going to be shooting down um, aircraft left, right and center. And the concealment is slightly worse than on the Hawkins. Now there's another heavy cruiser at tier 5, and that's the Furutaka, the Japanese tier 5. So let's have a very brief look at how these two compare. Obviously the Furutaka also gets the precise aim, but does not get the smokescreen. Uh, in return the Furutaka is um, mildly more sturdy than the Exeter, and still no one is going to accuse these things of being tanky. Significantly faster, obviously, and strangely enough, as a Japanese ship, significantly more maneuverable than the Exeter, <laughs> at least on the rudder. She does get uh, she does get six guns, but um, they are they are single they are single turrets. However, the HE is better on the Furutaka than on the Exeter. 
And the torpedoes being Japanese torpedoes obviously have a better range and hit harder, but she also gets a slower reload. And the Exeter does have the single fire torpedo feature, which means you have a better chance occasionally of getting them on target. Yes, so the Exeter. Um, how have I set this ship up? You, you get the choice between slightly more hit points, slightly more AA, and slightly uh, more main battery traverse speed. That is actually not a terrible choice. Uh, I have selected the advanced turret here for a reason, because I did not want to use the module because of the 10.5 second base reload, but uh, that gives me a main battery traverse of 20%, which allows me to fit the main battery mod 2. And she doesn't get her turret shot off an awful lot, so that's not a bad thing. Uh, you can't even fit concealment at tier 5, I believe, so uh, there's no real choice there. I have used the propulsion mod. Uh, you could probably go double steering in the ship, to be honest, but uh, it's still not a greatly maneuverable uh, brick in the water. I don't think you get you even get... Oh no, you get because it's a premium, you could actually fit a historical camouflage on it, which gives you more hit points, range, uh, AA range and torpedo damage reduction. Um, all in all, not particularly important, I'd say. It's like if, if she was... I mean, the a large caliber AA range doesn't really do an awful lot for you, and the torpedo damage reduction either. So none of these things is particularly great. If she was coming with 4% concealment and a dispersion, that's when I would have said maybe. But uh, as it stands, probably you can save yourself the thousand gold. And um, just use the Union Jack and look positively British, but it doesn't give you any kind of benefits. Now, I have, given that this is a premium ship, uh, parked David Beatty in this thing, who is um, who is currently on the Neptune and is occasionally moonlighting on the hood, hence the, hence the, uh, pr the marksman skill. <laughs> but um, I, he has the, he has two pretty good advantages. First of all, you get the Survivalist Plus, which means you're actually healing back more hit points. Although on the Exeter, that doesn't make an awful lot of difference because you don't have really many hit points to begin with. So healing back is not a, a great thing. But uh, she does, he, he does get the uh, Sixth Sense, which uh, allows you to know if someone is targeting you, which is exceedingly important in a ship as squishy and as unmaneuverable as this thing. And he also has the Mist Weaver Plus, which means we get 20% uh, uh, smokescreen duration, which is also quite nice. These are not fuel smokes, these are regular smokes. So um, you could you you could be forgiven to think that, okay, well, you have a heavy cruiser at tier 5, right? Probably you're going to be citadeling the living daylights out of the light cruisers around at this tier. And if one of them, you know, allows you to actually hit it at close range and sit still broadside on, then this can actually happen. The bigger problem is that um, you find a lot of battleships around the tier, not everybody is sailing a light cruiser, and she certainly isn't a destroyer hunter. So while she is pretty effective against light cruisers occasionally, uh, if you can manage to hit them, and with a 10.5 second base reload, which we have gotten a little bit down to uh, just under 10 seconds, uh, yes, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do have to work hard in this ship, uh, especially to work around the poor maneuverability to to make to make sure that you don't just get outright get yourself outright deleted by large caliber fire from uh, various battleships that are sitting around having nothing better to do than blow British cruisers out of the water. So let's uh, see her in action a little bit and uh, see what she's kind of good for and what she's kind of not so good for. The first round is an almost all-out tier 5 battle. I think we just have two wakefuls in here and obviously the, the bots, but the rest is, uh, yeah, re reasonably reasonably battleshipy. We're up against Iron Duke, uh, Ryo, a Koenig, a Furutaka, a Genway, and a wakeful in Domination on Trident. Now, this is not a destroyer hunter for two reasons. The dispersion is abysmal, you do need to be really careful with the penetration uh, because the AP at closer ranges will over penetrate destroyers and do almost no damage. And while she has torpedoes, she only gets three per side. The maneuverability is terrible and you have no utility. So <laughs> that's not what the ship is for. 
Regardless, uh, we are spawning around A cup and uh, probably the only thing I can do about here is try and capture the capture circle, being fully aware that there are three battleships on the enemy team and a bunch of destroyers, neither of which I am particularly well suited of dealing with. And there is, yes, one cruiser on the enemy team, so if I get my, my eyes on that thing, then I could be somewhat useful. Uh, yes, it's a Genway and a Wakeful, so I'm going to run into one of them for sure. Maybe even two, and uh, that's why I'm already being a little bit careful here and uh, just you know keep my my torpedoes actually on widespread i'm, I'm leaving on the armor piercing because at longer range, yeah and there i'm spotted immediately targeted full on reverse that's one of the destroyers so getting ready to switch to he because at six kilometer yeah it's the genway at, um, uh, at five kilometers probably the ap might start over penetrating yeah there you go uh, so you get one hit on target for 100 <laughs> 190 points of damage is nothing and you've got to wait almost 10 seconds for it to reload which means by the time you're getting shot at by everybody else you then get to dodge torpedoes get a second shell on target have made a little scratch into the uh, paint work on the destroyer and nothing much more with these two salvos so, um, but we have somewhat deterred, uh, deterred him. Uh, let's 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 drop some torpedoes in case that bot is going around the side. But this being a bot is obviously yeah, it's doing the dance. <laughs> so um, let's get rid of the bot at this range. Uh, he if I can hit it because even at two kilometers the Exeter can manage to miss completely with her rear turret. But the bot's now dead, but the Genway is back and that thing's probably reloaded at this point. So I'm gonna smoke up and deprive him of his torpedo lock on and uh, see that I can maybe get a couple shots on target. Yep, that wasn't too bad. Three with the precise aim on and then we're backing out of the smoke because, uh, well, he's probably torpedoed it. Yep, there come the torpedoes. So uh, that's why I did not want to sit in my smoke and we can dodge that. Oh, come on. I dodged that. That completely passed. But anyway, uh, so the destroyer is now sufficiently uh, distracted, at least for the next 30 seconds until the little bugger is reloading. Uh, we can assist a little bit with trying to set a fire on that Rio and maybe try to get a cap because we are not holding any capture circle and the enemy team holds all three, which is a problem. So uh, it looks like I think our team is completely losing at sea and uh, we are very heavily focused around here. So we do need to make something happen. At the same time, I don't want to run into any Genway torpedoes. So uh, we'll just help out with the Rio. Uh, get A cup and then make our way over into B while up there he is again. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go and hunt this little bugger because, well, my battleships. <laughs> and uh, yes, he is very close. He's gotten himself spotted. Like, oh, these were good torpedoes. He's predicted my, my turn. Nicely done. So I'm gonna take one, maybe two, yeah, two. And he's, he's bounced my rudder off. So I'm actually gonna, well done. Uh, not shot them. Not shot them at, this, at the same angle, but actually predicted where I was going to go. So not something you tend to see around this tier very much. And I'm always happy to see people have good, um, like have learned things. So well done. Uh, and there you see sort of the problem, right? <laughs> it's taking you the better part of a minute to sink a destroyer, even at point blank range. And these things have a, probably a reload of uh, 30 seconds. So um, I've got to smoke up again, just again to deprive him of his torpedo lock. And now I'm going to, I know he's going to torp the smoke, but I'm going to reverse into that. And uh, he has missed those torpedoes. So now I've uh, I've gotten him almost in the ropes here uh, with some assistance from probably that battleship behind me, who I would really prefer to have run B cup. But uh, well done, Botania. And uh, thanks for the assistance. When you're in a cruiser and you have to you have to be grateful to battleships for assistance with dealing with destroyers, then you know something is a little bit off. All right, we have just lost the Rio to the enemy for attacker, which means we're now killed down again, but we are holding two of the capture circles. So when we finally have some points income, the problem is the enemy team has been holding the capture circles for a while and has a bit of a points lead. There is the wakeful. And um, we have already established that I am not a I, I am not a destroyer killer, but uh, that New York there is now relatively, uh, relatively in a relatively bad position. He's getting crossfired, and all these have missed. So we are trying to do the thing that we probably supposed to be able to do, and we drop some torpedoes in the wake of the poor attacker because the New York is turning, and see if we can draw some fire. And someone is targeting me, and that Furutaka is dead, so I'm just gonna slow down. Yes, okay, so it's the König that's targeting me, and someone else. Yeah, Furutaka is dead. 
Uh, he's gonna die to my torpedoes, and um, but unfortunately he managed to get his torpedoes away against the New York, who is now also coming in a crossfire between the Iron Duke over there, the Wakeful, who has uh, dropped some torpedoes but is apparently missing. And I'm trying to swing the gun turrets around, I don't have torpedoes ready just yet, and it looks like he's coming for me. He might be reloaded, but the Britannia takes him down, nicely done. So again, I actually, I'm in a cruiser and I actually have to thank a battleship for having my back and dealing with destroyers, which is just hilarious. Anyway, uh, New York is on low hit points. Uh, New York, you want to be behind the island. We are, we are head on points. We've got two of the capture circles. Please don't try to win harder. Okay, I'm going to try and distract the König. I have to be careful about that because that thing can just outright delete me if I'm giving broadside. But maybe I can get some torpedoes on target. And uh, I've got the HE loaded for now. I have no, no illusion that I'm going to get the König killed. But if the New York can survive the next seven seconds, then um, we'll win on points. Torpedoes in on the Iron Duke, but the New York Iron Duke takes out the New York uh, while the, the König is distracted. And that uh, is unfortunately a loss at that point. <laughs> But there, there you see the sort of struggles that uh, that the ship is having to deal with, especially when dealing with things like destroyers that she really, really isn't suitable for. And uh, she's actually better suited to deal with larger targets. At the same time, she has no hit points, no maneuverability, and really has to rely on her smokes to make things happen. Which brings us neatly to the second game, in which we are facing Congo, Double New York, Omaha, Danae, a Duguay, Troin, and a Clemson. So once again, we are top tier, and uh, it is base capture on Scorching Islands. So off we go. Uh, yes, carriers. If there are carriers in play, uh, you are in trouble, because... Well, the best thing you can do is use your smoke screens to try and not get torpedo dropped, but other than that, uh, good luck dodging torpedoes. And you don't have the AA to necessarily fight back. All right, so Scorching Islands, left flank. Uh, there was a destroyer. Now, on this map, it's entirely possible that uh, some of the enemy team is coming around the, the flank. I definitely don't want to be anywhere in terms of crossfire. There is another Exeter here with us. So I'm going to head out this way. Uh, just around the islands in case somebody comes up the flank and then you're kind of getting sandwiched between battleships in the middle and whatever comes around the flank and then you're very dead because this thing has uh, not many more not many more hit points than <laughs> than the destroyers at this tier and uh, no armor either it's just enough to make sure that battleship shells uh, don't over penetrate and explode right in the middle of the ship all right, double Exeter. Let's see what kind of shenanigans we can get ourselves up to. I'm going to wait for them, uh, wait for the other one to catch up, and um, we might be able to share a smoke screen or something. So maybe we can, uh, maybe we can do something useful here. Let's see. Okay, there is one battleship, um, but I'm pretty sure there's other stuff out here. However, I'm switching to the HE just, you know, preemptively because if I'm starting to light up that Congo, then I probably do want the HE, and uh, he is not looking at us, so. I'm um, gonna get some. Uh, gonna start opening up. Maybe we, um, maybe we can start a fire or so. And yeah, he's definitely not paying attention. So maybe we can get the torpedoes away. Let's see. Uh, maybe we can start a fire. Uh, okay, Com Congo is going behind the island, and has noticed us. So uh, the friendly Exeter is opening up, but these torpedoes are going to miss because Congo is in a turn. So maybe, I'm not sure I can get them in front of the friendly Exeter or if he's going to run straight into them. Yeah, I think he's running straight. Uh, yeah, that, 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 it was just an experiment. So uh, nothing you could have done there. But double fire, that's nice. We take it. And now, uh, okay, I'm going to try not to cut you off there because you're sitting broadside onto a Congo. Okay, he smokes up. Good, good. Um, which means the Congo is now targeting me, which means I'm going to get into the smoke as well. And ow, that wasn't probably even meant for me, but I think we got out of that somewhat scot-free. So I'm going to see while the Congo is distracted. It is also a New York, so we do definitely need to be careful here. I'm going to use my own smoke uh, because that Congo and New York, ow, and he's even... F that was only high explosive. If that had been armor-piercing, I'd have been dead right here. But he's now, I believe, ow, yes, <laughs> that was armor piercing, but I got lucky that I was reversing. Uh, I believe he's perma flooding and on a perma fire, make that two. So another set of torpedoes out, and there's some torpedoes coming from the rear. That was probably one of the destroyers, but I need to get the heck out of here, because there's double New York back there, and that Congo isn't dead yet. So uh, the flooding has, has done its thing, and... Um, 
That smoke has been a lifesaver. There's now also an Omaha. Okay, uh, Congo is down. Nice. So we can start dealing with the Omaha. That's where you kind of want to use the armor piercing. Battleship armor piercing is actually struggling against Omahas because it's that it's so lightly armored that it can over penetrate. Um, now that mm, I, sh I might have had to lead those. I thought he was going to be stuck for a little bit longer. He might have had to lead those a bit more. Uh, Omaha obviously also has torpedoes, so we do need to wa somewhat, somewhat watch out for that. But yeah, th these torpedoes were, were a bust and I have no idea what he's doing. But I think he's going to get torpedoes away. So I am already turning around, which has, of course, the unfortunate side effect that A, I'm probably giving broadside to this battleship spark there, but hopefully they're far away enough. But I do need to dodge the potential Omaha torpedoes. They don't have the greatest range. And the pro second problem is that my turret traverse is absolutely abysmal, which means I only get that single rear turret on target. And I, don't ha I just don't have the maneuverability to tangle with something like an Omaha at close range. But... Uh, if he shows me broadside like that, uh, there you go. So Omaha torpedoes avoided, and um, now we are. Oh, some somebody is having connection issues again. Won't you know it? But uh, the armor piercing penetration is so bad, it's not even over penetrating the bow section of an Omaha. So <laughs> that is now a dead Omaha. And uh, who's next? What's left? There is a destroyer. I don't think he got torpedoes away, so we should be safe here. Uh, there is the Clemson. At this range, the armor piercing is actually decent. A team calls out, uh, calls, calls the Clemson out, but I'm already switching to high explosive because I am, well, uh, getting in close. There's also still two, there's still two battleships around, so let's see what we can still do. But yeah, if the Clemson makes, you know, things like gentle steering movements, then uh, these shells are going to miss. And uh, now I have to already uh, slow down because the Clemson probably has torpedoes away. So I'm better smoking up because he is targeting me, but the uh, New York actually takes him out of all people. There come the Clemson torpedoes, not going to happen. And I'm also smoking up to make sure that that New York or wherever that other battleship is don't get any funny ideas. So we'll, we'll just try to set some fires here and make ourselves useful. New York's coming, the, New York's coming that way. And uh, we might be able to get some torpedoes in range. So that's the only good thing about this thing is that the torpedo range is not bad for this tier. And um, uh, we might be able to get these on target. Otherwise, I'm going to get hit. Yeah, the New York's even looking. So, oh, there's another New York over there. Oh, that could be bad because I am about to do a hard turn to right. So if he's paying attention, then I am an ex-exeter. <laughs> oh, there he comes. Okay, okay. He's single firing. Heal, heal, heal. If that would have been a broadside. <laughs> but I got the torpedoes on target on the first New York who only can get the rear turret away. And at this point, I have already turned off and... The other, the other set of torpedoes is making it in, which means he is now flooding and on fire, which he damage controls, and he is now dead because the Ichizuchi has, Ichizuchi has taken him out, which only leaves that other New York, but we're out of time at this point. <sighs> so, with some doing <laughs> and some strategic use of smoke screens, uh, you, you can actually do a reasonable amount of damage to enemies uh, because it's tier 5 at the end of the day. But... Um, and be aware that this ship is very lightly armored, does not have an awful lot of hit points. Uh, the guns are really not the greatest. And uh, while they are pretty good against uh, light cruisers at close range, the dispersion means you're going to have a hard time hitting destroyers. And against battleships, if you're not getting the fire set with a 10 second reload and only six guns on the ship all in all. Yeah... Is it much better than the Hawkins? Can't say. I haven't really played the Hawkins an awful lot, but <laughs> uh, I, I heard that awful is a relatively decent description of the Hawkins. So it's workable, but it's also hard work <laughs> if you want to do good in, in the Exeter. So um, that's what that is. And uh, if you, for some reason, enjoy playing British heavy cruisers and uh, you would like to have one of them, then uh, there it is. Otherwise, you know, it's a free premium. You can use it as a captain trainer or if you don't want to team up with your team at tier five, just be prepared to pull all the stops of cruiser gameplay to make the ship work successfully and forget about chasing after destroyers because you have no chance whatsoever to do anything. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.